We kick it off right here with an historic day in the Holy Land. In just a few hours, the U.S. will open its embassy in Jerusalem after moving it out of Tel Aviv. Celebrations are underway ahead of the grand opening, and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is welcoming the U.S. delegation, certainly with open arms. This is a momentous time. President Trump is making history. And our people will be eternally grateful for his bold decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and to move the embassy there. Ambassadors from more than two dozen countries uh, attending today's dedication ceremony. Meanwhile, the Israeli military says it is bracing for up to 100,000 protesters right along the Gaza border. Joining us right now to talk more about that, former State Department official, former foreign policy advisor to President Obama's 2008 presidential campaign, and now a partner at Denton's law firm, David Tafuri. David, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. You're actually against the U.S. moving its embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Why? That's right, because I'm a big supporter of Israel, and it's an important relationship for the United States, of course. But this does nothing really to help Israel or the U.S., and most importantly, it does nothing to help the uh, Middle East peace process. So we've moved our embassy 35 miles, but we haven't moved the peace process forward even one inch. And this is another example of Trump's drive-by diplomacy. He makes a decision like this to move our embassy, but then he's not going to engage on the most important aspects of the relationship with Israel, which is helping Israel get towards a Middle East peace deal. So there are some American officials and Trump's relatives in town in Jerusalem to celebrate this move, but there's no effort towards the negotiation that needs to happen. Well, well why, Moreover, why do you think, why do you think then Benjamin Netanyahu is celebrating them this morning if it's not good for Israel? Well, I think it's, um, you know, from a PR perspective, this is a good thing for Netanyahu. This is something that hardliners in Israel very much wanted to happen. There's a lot of symbolism to this, but there's not much substance. In fact, the embassy isn't even ready, as you know. It's going to take six years until we actually finish the embassy. So this opening ceremony is just symbolic, and it helps him in that way. But it's not going to help with the more important goal of getting the peace process going. And in fact, as you noted, there are now um, uh, riots in in the Palestinian territories, in Gaza, and in West Bank. Yeah. And the Palestinians no longer think the U.S. is a neutral arbiter on the peace process. Well, why can't it be, why, Maria, why can't it be just practical? Israel's parliament is in Jerusalem. Most of its government is in Jerusalem. This is something that the U.S. Congress voted for in the last century, literally. And in terms of peace in the Middle East, the last three presidents before President Trump failed to negotiate a deal where I think the last uh, talks collapsed in 2014. So they might, uh, some people might argue with moving the, the embassy to Jerusalem, but what we've been doing in the past hasn't been working. What well, the last, yeah. I mean, the, you know, the last three presidents actually made a lot more uh, progress than President Trump has. President Trump has made zero progress at all. Well, you what say this, progress this, was made? What progress? You, I mean, for, this is the first time I've ever heard, for example, even the Saudis talking about being friendly uh, with, with Israel. Well, the Saudis weren't happy about our moving this embassy. The Saudis were against it. The entire Gulf. I'm talking Gulf. about the broader peace process. Look, right, there's, but, no, there's no doubt. Israelis, including its leader, Benjamin Netanyahu, are happy that the, the embassy is moving to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem. And there's no doubt that several presidents before President Trump have, have acknowledged that the capital of Israel is Jerusalem. Well, several presidents before uh, President Trump made the promise in their campaigns that they would move the embassy as well. But once they became president, they were briefed on all the impact, and they looked at the policy impact. They didn't move it. Now, move. I'm not saying we shouldn't move it at some point, but this was a huge thing to give to Israel, and we didn't get anything in return. We could have gotten concessions from Israel to get the peace process negotiation started again. We didn't get anything back like that. Um, and your guest says that this has a practical impact, but it really doesn't have a practical impact. As I said, the embassy actually isn't even ready. So practically, it's a, a problem for us to move our embassy before we actually have an embassy building that can hold the 850 embassy staff that we have in Israel. Most are going to have to stay in Tel Aviv anyway, which, by the way, is where every other country in the world that has a diplomatic uh, relationship with Israel has their embassy. Go ahead, Lee. I just, you said that, that there's three presidents before that had policy briefings that then said it was a bad idea. What was contained in those briefings that would make it a bad idea. 
Well, like I noted, uh, first of all, that it's going to upset the uh, leaders of the Palestinians in West Bank and in Gaza, that they would considered this something that they did not want to happen. So for us to do it, we should have gotten Israel to make some sort of compromise as part of a larger deal. We gave this up uh, for nothing. We got nothing in return nothing from Israel, no up. compromise. The, the, do you, are you arguing that the capital of Israel is not Jerusalem? I'm not arguing about where the capital of Israel is. I think Israel has a, a very strong claim that it is Jerusalem. And as, as you noted, we've moved, uh, Israel has moved um, its parliament to Jerusalem, and it operates out of Jerusalem as though it's its capital. And Jerusalem right. will certainly be part so of. So, what's the problem? Uh, uh, the, the problem is that this is, uh, you know, very controversial in the Middle East. And for us to have done this symbolically without getting anything else in return, we're just upsetting all of the other parties that need to come on board for a Middle East peace process. Mm -hmm. Moreover, as I noted, the embassy isn't even ready yet. So why are we saying we're moving the embassy when we actually can't even fit our, our diplomats into the embassy grounds? It's all symbolism, no substance. Well, if it's symbolism and no substance, then it doesn't matter. And the Trump administration has been clear. I know that the Palestinians want their own capital of a future state as East Jerusalem, but the Trump administration has been um, quite clear that the final boundaries of Jerusalem would be left up to final status negotiations. So this, exactly. doesn't, this doesn't dictate that to the, the Israelis or the Palestinians. Exactly, but this doesn't do anything to move the peace process forward. So why isn't uh, the Trump administration, which said uh, during the campaign it would very, be very easy to solve uh, the peace process between the Palestinians and Israel, why hasn't it made any progress toward that? Why aren't there? I think it actually has made progress. I think it actually has made progress, and this has been a priority of the Trump administration, the peace process, pretty aggressively. 